excuse me, um, I love you, who starts a conversation like that nobody but I do, but you are not a picture, I can cut you up behind you, I'll get you on my mind, uh, I try to. Hello everyone, it's Herlina, and today I'm going to be telling you guys about my experience working at a Sephora inside JCPenney's. Unfortunately, my time working at Sephora is coming to an end and I decided that I'm going to go ahead and make a video about my experience. So for anybody who is interested in working at Sephora or at least working at Sephora for holidays, they'll, they'll be able to watch this video and see what my experience was. Now the Sephora that I worked at was inside JCPenney, so I really don't know what it's like working at a freestanding Sephora. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the two are pretty different, so yeah, just just keep that in mind as you watch this video. I am pretty sad that they are letting me go. I gotta say that this by far has been my favorite job that I've had in my entire working career, but unfortunately some good things have to come to an end. Now I did sit down and write down some stuff that I want to talk about. Hopefully I don't miss anything, but yeah. This is my experience working at Sephora inside JCPenney. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is applying. Now applying is the easy part, okay? You just go online and you apply. Um, for Sephora inside JCPenney's, there, I think you go on uh, JCPenney's careers. And I think for freestanding, I think it's the Sephora careers. Now I actually applied for both freestanding and Sephora inside JCPenney's but I ended up getting a call back from the one inside JCPenney's and that was the one that I wanted to work at anyway because it's closer to my house and to my university so that would have worked well for me anyway. Now mind you I had actually applied for that Sephora at least at least four times. I mean I applied at that Sephora a lot. I applied at least every three months to see if they would even look at my application. One day I had actually went in and I asked one of the girls like when is the best time to apply because every time I apply it just seems like it gets looked over. She told me that the best time to apply would be in the beginning of October. So I made sure to apply in the beginning of October. And what do you know, I would say uh, probably less than two weeks I ended up getting a call from that Sephora, from the Sephora manager and she called me in for an interview. With that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and start talking about my interviewing process. Now, my interviewing process was not like your typical, you know, interview where they ask you, what are your weaknesses? What are your, what are your strengths? Um, I didn't get asked, uh, when have you ever received good customer service? When have you ever went out of your way for a customer? Um, I didn't even get asked that famous uh, perfume bottle question that um, all Sephora seemed to ask. When I called, she pretty much asked me if I was available to come that day. And I told her, um, I'm already out somewhere. I would have to go home and change. And she's like, oh, no, you don't have to do that. Because um, I, I thought that I had to come in wearing all black like other Sephora's do. but. Um, this manager, I guess she, she's just like, no, nah, you don't need to do that. You can come in as you are. Um, it's fine. So I did just that. I pretty much walked in with a hoodie. Okay, I walked in with my Ivy Park hoodie and some leggings. <laughs> and my makeup wasn't, you know, I mean, it was alright. It, it wasn't really the best. And um, my hair was also a mess too. <laughs> But once I walked in there, she started asking me about my availability and right then and there, I already knew that I was hired because when they start asking you about your availability, that's a perfect sign that they're hiring you. So yeah, the first thing we talked about was my availability. Um, I did ask her like a few questions like uh, uniforms. Basically the uniform was just to wear all black. Because I am a holiday hire, I'm just only temporary. It's not like they were gonna actually order me a uniform. All I had to do was just wear all black. I also asked her about gratis, and it turns out that they don't get gratis during the holidays, so I wasn't getting any free makeup. <laughs> I also asked about what hours I could get. She said about 15 to 25 hours. I ended up getting at least 15 to 16 hours a week, which is not a lot. 
And as for pay, um, she said that they usually start at 950, but because of my cosmetology background, I do have a cosmetology license, they went ahead and gave me a higher pay and I got paid 10 an hour. The previous job that I had before was already paying me 10 an hour, so it wasn't really much of an upgrade, but I guess it's good because I'm getting paid higher than what they would have started me. During the interview, she basically told me about the policies and everything. Um, we get paid hourly. We do not get paid commission because uh, they don't want any competition. She also told me about how serious she is when it comes to sanitizing, which I understand because I'm very uh, sanitary too. Like, as a makeup artist, I have to be sanitary. So, yeah, I, I'm good at sanitizing. I pretty much, you know, we pretty much talked about that for a really long time. I don't know why we talked about sanitizing for a long time, but that was most of our <laughs> interview. But yeah, she basically told me the policies and um, how they really do like to push Beauty Insider. And because this is a Sephora inside JCPenney's, we also have to push credit. You know, she basically gave me like a full rundown of what it's like working in a Sephora inside JCPenney's, opposed to a freestanding. When she was done interviewing me, she asked me if I wanted the job. And of course, I was like, yeah, I want the job. <laughs> so yeah, I pretty much uh, got the job. And that was an easy hire. Like, that was the easiest interview I've ever had. Like, I've never had, like, she didn't ask me any interviewing questions. So that's what kind of, it was almost like the moment I answered the phone, I already had the job. Now, I don't know if it's that easy for other Sephoras. Um, maybe it was easy for me because I'm only a holiday hire and I had the availability plus the experience. But um, I don't know what the interviewing process is truly because I don't think I got the traditional interview process. <laughs> I don't know. It just, it just seems like I was hired on the spot. <laughs> now, just to give you like a little taste of what it was like, working in Sephora, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys my first day. Now, my first day, I was pretty nervous because this was actually my first retail job. I've never worked in retail before, <laughs> never sold clothes, none of that. The, the closest I've ever been in retail was fast food. And if you've worked fast food, you know how that goes. So when I walked in the JCPenney's, I tried to clock in with my associate's number but I couldn't clock in. I guess because I wasn't really in the system yet. I had to wait a few days before they can just add my hours in. I don't know how that goes, but I wasn't able to clock in my first day. So after I signed in in the back, I went ahead and went over to Sephora and I went up to one of the managers. I introduced myself. I was like, hi, I'm Herlina. I'm new here. This is my first day. Um, I don't really know what to do here, so like, what would you like me to do? <laughs> now mind you, when I walked in, it was a lot of people. It was a lot of uh, customers, clients, whatever. It was a lot of people. It was like rush hour. And I was pretty much thrown on to the manager. And she was actually at the register at the time. So I felt like I was putting a lot of stress on her, but I genuinely did not know what to do because this is my first day here. I'm just now getting here, I don't know what to do. <laughs> After she finished ringing that person out, she was like, okay, um, just wait over here, I'll, I'll help you in a second. And so she went away, and then she came back with another manager, and this manager just so happened to be uh, the trainer for new hires, I guess. So she ended up helping me out. She took me to the back, uh, the Sephora office, and she had me watch a few training videos so I can get familiar of what to do in Sephora. Now along with the training video, she also gave me this packet. It was like this packet of questions that are gonna be answered in the videos that I watch. So it was, it was pretty cool. I mean, it was, it was kind of like doing homework. <laughs> now I hear the training is actually better in freestanding Sephora's, but we'll get into that later. But um, I pretty much was just watching videos and filling out the packet and that was basically all of my training. In the middle of me watching the videos, one of the managers actually came back and was like, hey, there's a lot of people out here. Uh, sorry to just throw you out, you know, when do you not knowing much. 
in the middle of me watching the videos, one of the managers actually came back and was like, hey, um, we usually don't do this, but because there's a lot of people out there, we're just going to go ahead and have you on the floor. Um, just kind of learn as you go. And since I had watched a few videos just to see, you know, like how to interact with customers, because that was really what I was nervous about. You know, this was my first retail ever. Like I've never worked retail before. I've never had to sell a product a day in my life. <laughs> and this is like my first time being put on a floor or in a position where I might have to sell something. <laughs> but because I watched some of the videos uh, just to kind of get what it's like to interact with Sephora clients, I wasn't I wasn't too nervous going back out into the floor. That was basically all of the training that I got my entire time being there. So yeah, it was pretty much a learn as you go type of thing. One of the hardest things though was learning all of the products. Um, working in Sephora, of course, if you're going to sell Sephora products, you kind of got to know the products. Um, it was hard to get to know good foundations for certain skins and what skincare a certain skin type might like, you know, just stuff like that. What would be a good primer to use with this foundation, you know, just, yeah, just stuff like that. It was kind of hard to get to know all of the products, but you are allowed to take three samples home each week. I ended up taking more than three samples home. Gosh. Sorry if there's so much talking in the background. I guess we got company. I ended up taking more than three samples home because, I mean, I had to learn a whole lot of products, okay? It's, it's, really, it's really hard to get to know all the products in uh, Sephora. I gotta say with that, I ended up learning about a lot of new products and products that I'm probably gonna buy sometime in the future and keep buying because, you know, I'm not very into skincare. I mean, of course, you would think with me having a cosmetology license, I would know a lot about skincare, but really that's esthetician. I don't, I mean, cosmetology is focused mostly on hair. A little bit about waxing, a little bit about makeup, but I'm not too big on skincare. I'm just a wash your face and go type girl. But I did end up learning a lot of new products for skincare, like, I got a whole bunch of uh, moisturizing samples. I got some masks, um, some sprays, you know. Um, oh, I even got these little eye patches. If you ever want to try an inexpensive um, skincare brand, I would I would definitely recommend the Sephora brand because it's very inexpensive. The Sephora brand is probably the least expensive in Sephora. <laughs> Um, like all of their stuff is very inexpensive. I really like the Sephora brand. I love it more because I mean obviously I was surrounded by it. I mean I just loved it. I mean I just got a lot of skincare stuff like I got I mean their wipes, their eye patches, their nose patches, their spray mist. I mean their stuff is just bomb okay. I love the Sephora collection. I'm probably gonna buy some more stuff from the Sephora collection. Their stuff is just very inexpensive and I would always recommend it to a client that was looking for good skincare products but for a low price. I'll be like, yeah, the Sephora collection has a really good um, price range. Now, as I told you, the Sephora that I worked at was a Sephora inside JCPenney's, which is very different from the freestanding Sephora. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys the differences in them or at least the differences that I learned from them. The training process slash uh, orientation is very different from uh, freestanding Sephora's. I hear in freestanding Sephora's that they're more intense, well not intense, like they're fun. They're more fun, they're more educating. You get people from different brands that come in and educate you guys on the brands that they live and breathe for. While as for Sephora Inside JCPenney's, you just watch videos. I mean, in my case, I watched like five videos and that was it. That was my training. Now, because I was working in a Sephora Inside JCPenney's, I also had to push for credit, which is getting people to sign up for a JCPenney's credit card. Now, I don't know about you, but when I go inside a Sephora, 
I don't expect to sign up for a JCPenney's card, do you? Because I don't. Basically, if somebody signed up for a JCPenney's card, uh, they would get this goodie bag. And I think they would also get some coupons, but they wouldn't be able to use it in the Sephora. You would have to use it in another department. They don't work in Sephora, basically. In actuality, JCPenney's coupons actually don't work inside Sephora, inside JCPenney's, even though it's inside of JCPenney's. Yeah, I don't know how that works, but you can't use it on the makeup, basically. Now, in freestanding Sephora's, you wouldn't have to worry about credit, but they do push Beauty Insider. And they also push Beauty Insider in uh, JCPenney's, but I think they push credit more, in my opinion. But uh, you wouldn't have to worry about that in the freestanding Sephora. You just have to push Beauty Insider. Now, I was pretty good at getting people to sign up for the Beauty Insider program uh, because it's free and you get a birthday gift every year on your birthday. I would tell them that and that would be enough for them to sign up for it. And if you are having a hard time getting people to sign up for it, here's a nice tip. Um, if you have a man coming in to buy products for his girlfriend or his sister or significant other. Um, obviously, they're not gonna have a Beauty Insider because they don't shop at Sephora. But when they buy their products, what you can do is just pull up the information and start asking for their information. Just be like, hey, what's your name? And they'll tell you. They'll give you their information. They're not gonna know that you're actually signing them up for a Beauty Insider. But hey, I mean, if you need to sign more people up, then sign them up. Sometimes they'll be like, oh no, my wife has one, uh, my, my daughter has one, my sister has one, I'll just put it on hers. And that's fine too, but if, you know, if they don't stop you, just get their information and sign them up. And there you go. Now I'll be honest, I wasn't very good when it came to credit. Anytime I asked somebody if they wanted to sign up for a JCPenney's credit card, they would just tell me no. I only had one person sign up for it, and that person would actually come and sign up for it. I think at least once a month because you do get a goodie bag when you sign up for it and plus you get coupons. She wouldn't get approved, but I mean, hey, at least I had somebody sign up. <laughs> I would say if you are working in a Sephora inside JCPenney's, really work on credit because they do push that. They, I mean, that is important. So yeah, just work on that. When it comes to explaining programs and like rewards and stuff, Kind of, kind of practice with yourself how you're going to explain it to somebody. Anytime I would choke on explaining to somebody, I kind of feel like I just drop the ball and they're like, eh, you know what, never mind. It, it doesn't really sound that good. But if you sell it to them and you're very confident about it, then they might just be like, eh, it doesn't, eh, it doesn't sound too bad. Now, another thing that was different from the freestanding Sephora is that the positions are different. Basically, at a freestanding Sephora, you would get one specific position. You would be assigned a spot and you stay in that spot. Uh, say you're in skincare or you're in color or you are over in Estee Lauder or Fenty, okay? Like you stay in one specific spot. But as for Sephora inside JCPenney's, we pretty much were everywhere. Everybody did the same thing, besides the managers, of course, but um, Everybody, you know, was everywhere. We had no specific position. We were all just team members. Now, when it comes to discounts, I would say that JCPenney's would be better because if you're paying with cash, you get 25% off. If you're paying with the JCPenney's card, you get 25% off. And if you're paying with just your debit card, you get 20% off. I would always pay with my debit card because I don't carry cash, so I will take the 20% off for 200 Alex. Now I think in freestanding Sephora's you get 20% off. I'm not sure about that. I don't remember, but I do know that it's less than what you can get at JCPenney's. Now another thing that I learned, which I kind of felt like I already knew, I should have already known, but uh, Sephora inside JCPenney's, we actually do not carry everything that a freestanding Sephora would. Freestanding Sephora's have more variety, uh, more brands. They carry a lot more brands than we do. Like for example, they would carry Estee Lauder and we didn't. They would carry Clinique and we didn't. 
they would carry certain perfumes that we didn't carry like Chanel we don't carry Chanel but they do and a lot of people would get really upset when you tell them oh yeah we don't carry that here they might carry it at the freestanding Sephora you might have to go to a different mall and they would get so mad about it but I mean it's not like we can control that like now another thing that I learned was the return policy the return policy has actually changed and they're actually the same in both stores. Basically, if you wanna return something, you have to return it within 30 days with the receipt, and at least 80% of the product still has to be in the container or whatever. It used to be that you could return without a receipt. Like, you could have two-year-old uh, foundation that you just, you just found, and you're like, huh, I wonder if I can get my money back for this, and they would take it back. As a matter of fact, I remember when I bought this Kat Von D Locket Foundation and I mean, look at this. Look at how much product I still have left. Like I have so much product left. Now this is very old foundation. I would not put this on my face. I kind of just grew out of the foundation. Like I really don't like it to be honest. Like the, the foundation just became so cakey. I don't know. I just wasn't a big fan of it. But I asked them if I would be able to return this and they were like, oh no, you, you have to return it within 30 days. And I'm like, huh, I, I, thought, I thought that you can return anything. They were like, yeah, they changed the policy. Okay. Now another thing about the return policy is that you actually can't return Sephora inside JCPenney products to freestanding products. And you also can't return freestanding products to Sephora inside JCPenney's. Like for example, if you bought a foundation from a freestanding Sephora, you can't go inside of a JCPenney Sephora and try to return it because we can't take it back and vice versa. The reason why it's like this is because we actually are under a different system than Sephora. The freestanding Sephora's are under the Sephora system and we are under JCPenney's. Therefore, we can't take their returns or exchange and they can't take ours either. That also goes for the Sephora website. If you get something from the Sephora website, you can't return it inside of a JCPenney's. And when you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Like if you bought something uh, like uh, shoes from JCPenney's, you can't go into a freestanding Sephora and try to exchange it like no <laughs> it's kind of like that basically and there were a few customers that would get frustrated with that because like they just wouldn't understand it honestly like it's not rocket science to get but for some people it was hard to understand and they would get really mad that you couldn't exchange it another thing that was different is how they schedule or how you can check your schedule I think uh, in a freestanding Sephora, they do it through an app. In a Sephora inside JCPenney's, they do it through the JCPenney's Kiosh, Kio, I, I forgot what it was called. But they do it through a JCPenney's Associates um, website. So yeah, that's how you figure out what your schedule is throughout the week. Now that's pretty much all I have written down when it comes to the differences between the two. Um, I hope I didn't miss anything. If you have anything to add, feel free to add it in the comments. Now moving on to interacting with the clients. Of course, this is a retail job, so you kind of have to be a people person. You kind of have to walk up to people and be like, hey, how are you doing? You finding everything all right? You doing all right over here? You do have to be kind of annoying to them, uh, especially if you think people are stealing. I know whenever I walk into a store, I kind of hate being approached if I already know what I'm doing or if I really don't need help. Um, it does get annoying, but you do have to annoy the customers just a little bit, just a little. You have to always walk up to them and be like, hey, how are you doing? Are you doing all right? It's also good to conversate with the clients. I mean, if, if you get really bored, like, like there's nothing to do and there's people in the store, Feel free to walk up to them and start a conversation. Be like, I really love this highlighter. Or, you know, that's actually my favorite palette. Or if you overhear them talking about a product, feel free to jump into that conversation and maybe it might turn into you selling a product. You never know. I would say I did a pretty good job interacting with clients uh, and selling products. I was pretty good at it. 
I'm, I'm gonna be real. I was pretty good for this being my first retail job. When it came to interacting with clients, it wasn't very much. I mean, it all consisted of like making samples, doing mini makeovers, uh, swatching, seeing what their foundation shade was, recommending products, you know, or even um, just just having full on conversations with them. Like, how are you doing? Like, what are you doing for the holidays? Like, you know, just stuff like that. Now, when it came to recommending products, personally, I wasn't very good when it came to skincare because like I said earlier, I'm not too big on skincare. I don't know what I'm talking about when it came to skincare. If I ever sold something at the crack of my ass, it was skincare. But hey, people would buy it. They would buy it. They would buy it, you know? And hopefully, it turned out right for them. I promise y'all, I'm not a con artist. I'm not a scammer. It's just, I don't like, you know, for you to know that I don't know what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna pretend that I know what I'm talking about. I mean, hey, if they didn't like what they got, they could just return the product and none of the stuff that I recommended was ever returned, so. Now, I was pretty good when it came to recommending what primer you should use, what foundation you should use, even, even the moisturizers, like, I was pretty good at. But when it came to stuff like masks, uh, exfoliators, you know, stuff that I don't use, like, I don't know, ma'am. I don't know. And that's mostly what I would do. Like, if I hear a number of people that have dry skin talk about a certain product, I would say, well, I hear people with dry skin must really like this product and blah, blah, blah. You know, stuff like that. And But you could always make those people samples if you really don't know what you're talking about and you don't want to sell something that you don't know what you're talking about. Um, just make them a sample make them go home and try it before they actually buy it. And with that being said, I'm actually gonna go ahead and end the video right here because I think I gave you guys enough information about working in a Sephora inside JCPenney's. I was gonna go in on the rude customers that I encountered, but um, I guess I can save that for another video because this video is already too long anyway. So that is briefly what my experience working at Sephora was. I hope I didn't forget anything. Oh, actually, um, did I talk about mini makeovers? I'm just gonna say it again if I didn't. Um, basically, when it came to makeovers, uh, you can do mini makeovers. Anybody on the floor can do mini makeovers. And mini makeovers consisted of just primer and foundation and some powder. Like, you didn't do like the whole shebang, the whole highlighting, contouring, eyebrows, nothing else just primer and foundation now when it came to cms which is custom makeovers custom makeovers you had to buy i think 50 dollars worth of product and you actually you actually had to schedule for that typically at least in my location they only scheduled on friday and saturdays um i don't know if that's in all locations but they would only do it on those certain days and they would actually have the sephora store managers do the CMs. Uh, regular associates couldn't do the CMs. Like, I guess you had to be certified to do it. Now, I don't know if I was automatically certified because I had a cosmetology license. I don't know. I don't think I was allowed to do it. I just went ahead and let the, <laughs> let the managers do their job. Now, I did do a few mini makeovers. Um, I did more than I was supposed to. Like, I would pretty much do all of the skin products. Like I would do moisturizer, primer, uh, foundation, highlighting, contouring, uh, the whole shebang, uh, powder contour, powder, um, translucent powder, you know, just stuff like that. I wouldn't necessarily just leave them hanging. I mean, the whole point of mini makeovers is for demonstration purposes. Like if this person is thinking about buying the product but doesn't know how it's going to look on them, they don't know how to apply it, then that's what the mini makeover is for. You can demonstrate how to apply it on them. But if they literally just come in and it's like, hey, can I get a makeover? Um, you have to pay for that. But anyways, other than that, I think I've pretty much explained everything in this video. At least that's all I can think about. 
Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I hope this video was very informational. I had a very fun time working at Sephora. I honestly wish they wouldn't let me go, but they can only keep one person and I, wish, I just so happened to not be that person that they kept. If you have worked at Sephora and you have anything to add, feel free to comment. Also, like, subscribe, and share this video with all of your friends. Share this video with whoever you know wants to work at Sephora and they're interested and they want to know some information about it. And with that being said, feel free to check out any of my other videos. Until then, I will see you in the next video.